All right. Uh, it is so good to see you guys this morning. I know this is a, a dicey time in our congregation. We have a lot of people on travel uh, here and there, but we thank God that you guys are with us. And um, I, I was really pleased to see uh, the amount of people that purchased their books. Uh, you know, when, when that shipment came in, I ordered 50 books. And I said, Lord, how many more, how many will we have left over? I didn't know. But I looked on the stack, and the stack has dwindled down. So I said, praise the Lord. <laughs> That's a good thing. That means that we're ready. That means that we're ready. And, uh, again, this is your personal workbook. So put your name in it, and uh, feel free to write in it. This is, you know, some people take notes in their Bible in the margins. and Well, this book has a lot of margins on it. You can write all kinds of things on the margins. And some of the exercises will, will, will call for that. Uh, but uh, I want you to feel free to use this book. This book is going to be a work uh, book in progress. So, all right, I, I want you to turn to um, page five, where it says introduction. I want to just give a brief uh, overview of some things here uh, and read through this introduction so that we can have an understanding of what this is. All right, page five. It says, Master Life is a developmental small group discipleship process that will help you develop a lifelong obedient relationship with Christ. Master Life One, now remember this is, this is the first book in a four-part series, okay? So this is the disciples' uh, cross, okay? We're going to find out what the other books are about. But the disciples' cross is the first of four books in the discipleship process. Through this study, you will experience a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ as he leads you to develop six b biblical uh, disciplines of a disciple. The other three books in the Master Life process are Master Life 2, The Disciple's Personality, Master Life 3, The Disciple's Victory, and Master Life 4, The Disciple's Mission. These studies will enable you to acknowledge Christ as your master and to master life in him. All right, what's in it for you? The goal of Master Life is your discipleship, for you to become like Christ. To do that, you must follow Jesus, learn to do the things he instructs, He instructed his followers to do, and help others become his disciples. Master Life was designed to help you make the, the following definition of discipleship a way of life. And here it is. Christian discipleship is developing a personal, lifelong, obedient relationship with Jesus Christ in which he transforms your character into like Christ-likeness, changes your values into kingdom values, and involves you in his mission in the home, the church, and the world. Okay? That's a real, it's a, it's a, it's a long definition, but that's something to go back and read and reread again because that's the core of what we're shooting for. We want to be Christ-like in these areas. Uh, and the last part of that talks about in the home, in the church, and in the world, okay? And that's really what disciples are called uh, to. We're called to the home, to the church, and to the world. Look on. As you progress through the mass life process and learn to follow Christ as his disciples, you will experience the thrill of growing spiritually. Here are several ways you will grow. Notice this. You will discover that denying yourself, taking up your cross, and following Christ is such an exciting and challenging adventure that it will become the top priority in your life, okay? And it, it's good that they have that as a, as a very first one because that's something that we're going to run into when we get into lesson one, week one. The next one says, you will understand what it means to abide or live in Christ, and you will experience the peace, security, and purpose that abiding in Christ brings. Next one, you will experience the assurance and confidence that comes from living in the word. You will develop new skills from studying and interpreting the Bible. The Holy Spirit will use these, those skills to give you fresh insights into the scriptures and into God's will for your life. You will experience new power in prayer as you learn to pray in faith. Now, let me stop there for a minute. As you move through each lesson, you're going to find that there's going to be a lot of things to pray for. Okay? This is not just 
intellectual, you know, writing things out. What does the verse say? You know, but it's taking those things that it, 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 it describes and unpacks for us. And then we're going to go back to our knees. We're going to find some time in prayer uh, personally. Uh, and it's going to be a lot of introspective. We're going to look within and we're going to pray about things that are personal to us. So uh, be prepared to do that as you move through. Take these things and these lessons personally because that's where it's to be applied first and foremost. Uh, but it's going to enrich your prayer life. How many saw the uh, War Room movie? Uh, sort of like that where you it, prayer is an essential, okay? All right, look on. You will experience deeper fellowship with other believers. And, and, that, and that's important because when we break up into groups, uh, there will be, be smaller groups. This is a general session here. We'll have our general sessions every first Sunday. But the second, third, and fourth Sundays or fifth will be in our small group sessions. And in those small groups, you'll, be, you'll build relationships with each other. We say, Preacher, I, I know everybody. But I don't think we have, have really gotten to know each other uh, uh, in every single area. And especially as we move through the material, uh, new things will come to light. New things will come to the surface, uh, perhaps, that we don't know about each other, uh, that we can help to pray for each other on as well. Look on. You will discover the joy of sharing Christ with others, both by way of uh, by the way you live and by what you say. You will experience the fulfillment of I investing yourselves in others by ministering to their needs. You will observe the Christ-like attitudes developed naturally and spontaneously in your life. These include humility, I mean humility and servanthood, dependence on God, love for people, especially f fellow Christians, confidence in you, in your in yourself and in God a sense of God's presence through his direct guidance, a desire to serve God and people, concern for the unsaved people, deepening faith, overflowing joy, perseverance and faithfulness, appreci uh, appreciation of God's work through the church, companionship with your family members, and a prayerful spirit. Now, I want you to look down at the bottom of the page there, the six keys, because you're going to hear more about these as we move into the actual study. As you develop a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ, you'll experience his leading, he, his, his leading you to develop six biblical disciplines of, this, of a disciple. These disciplines are, number one, spending time with the master. One of the first things you're going to discover in this session is how to spend time with the Lord. Okay, some of us already have our quiet time. Some of us might not be disciplined in that area. Well, this is a time for all of us to develop that and understand what are the elements that go into that. Why is it important? Why is it paramount that we have this personal time with the Lord? Spending time with the master. Number two, li live in the word. Live in the word. In other words, the word of God that we're going to study is going to become uh, very practical. Very practical to everyday life. In other words, when you go through the lesson, there'll be something for you and I to do with what we've been exposed to. Praying in faith, okay, we talked about that. Fellowship with believers, witness to the world, and minister to others, okay? Flip the page over. You're going to, as we move through, and I'm just going to give an overview of how, how the book is used. You see the example of a chair. Um, Christ is, at, is the back. I mean, the church is the back. The Christ is the seat. And then the four legs, you have leader, group session, daily activities, and weekly assignments. And th these are equally uh, important because they support the overall structure of this series, okay? Look at the daily activities. Number one, the daily activities in this book lead you into a closer walk with Christ. Doing these exercises daily is important. Um, as we get into, and I believe it's Luke 9.23, uh, where, where it states, uh, you know, taking up, denying self and taking up your cross and following uh, Jesus. Someone find that text for us, Luke 9, 23. Whoever gets there first. Okay, 
deny self, three elements, deny self, take up cross daily. And I think that's something that we ought not run past, but that's in the text for a reason. Take up your cross daily. In other words, there's something that God wants us to do uh, by way of this discipline every single day. And where most Christians fail is that we don't do this daily. In other words, there's a discipline that God is calling us to. When Jesus says this, he's, 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 he's calling us to a life of discipline now. Not, not chaos, not uh, 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 um, sporadic, you know, sometimes, you know, and all of us have been there. But what God is calling us to today is a lifestyle of discipline. Okay, and that starts with the things of God. So the daily activities mirror that same call that Jesus is calling us to. Take up our cross daily. Okay, so we're going to have daily activities uh, from this workbook that will challenge us, that will hold us accountable. We talked about accountability uh, about a month or so ago, and this is where it really comes into play because the book and the material, the resources, the reading, the studying will keep us on course, and that's what we want. Number two, weekly assignments, and this is in, in labeled in my walk uh, with the master this week. You'll see that as you flip through the pages on the margins. Uh, this is a real-life experience that will change your life, okay? Uh, little uh, points of encouragement that will boost your faith as well. Number three, the leader is a majority, is a major element. Discipleship is a relationship. It is not something you do by yourself. You need human models, instruction, and accountability to become what Christ intends for you to be, okay? Uh, now, on, on that note, let me introduce those that will be leading the groups. We're going to have three uh, groups, okay, three groups. Um, I'm going to take one group, and um, uh, again, before we dismiss today, we're going to uh, begin to divide up into those three groups. I'll take one. Uh, my wife is going to take uh, a group uh, as well, a women's group, and Brother Shepherd here is going to take a group. And as Again, as we grow, and I do plan for this to grow. I do plan. The Lord has really just laid that on my heart. It's not going to be, you know, just us four and no more. It, this is going to grow because what God is going to do in the life of our church is that he's going to grow disciples. And guess what? Disciples are attract, will attract other potential disciples because the Bible says in Matthew 28, the Great Commission is to do what? Go and do what? What? Make disciples. So what does that mean? That we are disciples ourselves, but we're not just called to be our, uh, by ourselves. We're called to come and encourage others to begin this walk of discipleship. So we're making disciples. That's what the Great Commission is. A lot of people interpret that to mean uh, get people saved. Well, that's just the open door. That's just the front door. Uh, that's not it. That's, we're not done. That's just the beginning. Okay. Yeah, get them saved, get them in Christ, give them new life in Jesus, but then make disciples. That's the Great Commission. Show them, and the rest of the verse says, teaching them to observe all the things that I've commanded you, uh, baptizing them. You know, take them full force. Take them full uh, all the way through. Don't just leave them at the door and say, you're saved. Good, my, my work is done. No, let's learn how to walk by faith. Let's learn how to be like Jesus, and let's actually become disciples. So that's what it's all about. So our groups, uh, we're going to divide up that way, and um, we'll let you know what group you're going to be in. But that's the, the golden objective. All right. Uh, number four says the weekly group sessions help you reflect on concepts and experiences in master life and help you to apply the ideas to your life. Okay. So there's going to be interaction. In other words, when you go home and you do your homework for day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, that's, you know, the whole week. You're going to have something you're going to have to do, okay? Uh, when you come back on Sunday and you meet in your small group, you're going to have something to share. You're going to have something to talk about. You're going to have some questions. Well, you might have a different answer than your, than your neighbor. You might have a different perspective than your neighbor. Well, those things need to be shared in the group, okay? That's what small groups are for. So don't think that it's, it's just coming. The teacher's going to, you know, teach the whole thing. You're going to have an uh, uh, opportunity to share interact with one another, and again, the, the groups are small enough so that we can do that and still make progress, 
kind of hard to do that when you got a whole congregation. Okay, you, you never get anywhere. But when you have small groups, you can have that type of personal uh, interaction and actually uh, glean uh, from what your neighbor has learned, or maybe they're going to learn and benefit from what you have, have. You know what you've learned as well. Your insights. So be prepared for that interaction. Number five, Christ is the discipler, and you become his disciple as you fully depend on him. He works through each, each of the uh, previous elements and uses them to support you. Number six, the body of Christ, the church, and here's where it, where it comes full circle. The church is vital, uh, is vital for complete discipling t- to take place. You depend on Christian friends for fellowship, strength, and ministry opportunities. Without the church, you lack the support you need to grow in Christ. I want you to get that last sentence. Without the church, you and I lack what we really need to grow in Christ. Okay? You, we cannot grow the way God wants us to grow without the church. Okay? And that's what a lot of Christians really need to grow to understand. If we can just get past that point, we will be here because we realize we need the church the way God has established the church and designed the church. It's to edify one another. And we can't receive that edification, that encouragement, that enrichment without being a part of the church. So it's a twofold thing. It brings us closer. Now, look down. Uh, There's some symbols there. Uh, You see some several crosses. And as you, as you go through the book, you'll see these symbols. Each day of the five days a week, you will be ex- expected to study a segment of the material in the workbook and to complete the uh, related activities. You may need from, listen to this, you may need from 20 to 30 minutes to study each day. So carve out some time, okay? Set some time aside, maybe in the morning or at night, and, you know, that's your master lifetime, Okay. Even if, even if you find that you can study the material in less time, spreading the study over five days will give you time to apply the truth to your life. Now, yeah, most of us probably can take it and say, well, I can just skim through the first three days in one sitting. You know, uh, that's fine. But let me tell you this. The, the goal and objective is to take a piece a day, next piece for the next day, another chunk for the next day, so that you're not trying to digest everything at once. Okay, because there's, trust me, there's more here than what we probably bargained for. God will speak to us through the little pieces. God will minister, and that's the goal. It's not just to get the facts, it's to actually get the application from what we're exposed to. So even if it's familiar, take that time and say, Lord, minister this truth into my heart. Because there's something in me that still needs to change. So don't rush past familiar, familiar things. Don't rush past things that seem simple. Take the time and pray through it, press through it, and uh, spend that time uh, with the Lord. Now look at the symbols. The first, sim- the first cross uh, has a dot in the middle. That means that stands for spend time with the master. And then with the lower half darkened, uh, that refers to living in the word. The top half of the cross uh, praying in faith. The right side, pray, a fellowship with believers. The left side, witnessing to the world. And then the whole cross, ministering to others. So you're going to see that uh, as you move through each lesson. Uh, and you come to understand what that, what that logos or what that symbol means. Okay? Uh, it's going to have an emphasis there. Now, here's what I want you to do. Uh, from You don't have to do it right now. But on page 7, the auto... Uh, autobiographical, uh, uh, the worksheet there, I want you to fill that in. You don't do it now, but take that home and uh, fill that in, as well as page 8. Page 8 is a survey, okay? And, again, there's no right or wrong here. This is just what are your thoughts? How do you respond? Okay, when it, as it refers to abiding in Christ. And the text for that is going to be John chapter 15, Verses 1 through 17, talking about uh, Jesus is divine, you know, and, and so forth and so on. Um, as you read that text, read that first, and then fill in, just check those boxes that apply, okay, in that section. And then on page 9, discipleship covenant. This is going to be done 
in your small groups. Because what's going to happen is at the bottom of the page, uh, those in your groups, they were going to help each other. Uh, you're going to fill it out, but the bottom of that page, uh, your group mates are going to sign because they're going to encourage you. And guess what? You're going to encourage them to keep their commitment, to keep your commitment to the Lord in this process. So uh, that's, and it'll be signed, of course, uh, by the, your group leader as well. But, but this is a process that I think all of us need to go through because as we dedicate ourselves to studying God's word and becoming fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ, it cannot be done alone. I think that's the first myth that's going to be distilled, that's going to be dismissed. We've got to uh, uh, do this in community, and we've got to do it in, a, in an accountability to keep each other on course. Because guess what? Challenges will come up. Things will come up. Distractions will come up. You know, uh, schedules will, will go here and there. But you know what? Uh, we, if you start by making a commitment, then that's going to be in your mind. That's going to be in your heart. And as you keep, uh, you say, Lord, I, it's just like this ring. You know, it doesn't mean that you're not going to be tempted. It simply means remember the commitment you made. Stay true to your commitment. And what this does for us is to say, stay true to your commitment. Because God is honoring not just the work you do, but he's going to honor just that commitment. Starting out, just being committed is going to speak volumes. And I think God is looking for that. And that's a part of the process as well. All right. That's by way of introduction. You'll get more uh, of the details as you get into your small groups. But flip over to page 11. As we um, get into the first, and I, I just want to highlight a few things that you're going to go further into on this first week. And again, week one uh, on page 10 is spending time with the master. We're going to start uh, on the ground level, like you would if you enter a building. We're going to start on a ground level, spending time with the master. Spend time with the master. What's this week's goal? Someone read what... Uh, the week's goal for week number one. So evaluation is the name of the game. Evaluation. If you have not looked at yourself, take the time to look at yourself. Okay? Uh, take the time to look at yourself. We're not looking at anybody else. This is not the group session just yet. This is self-reflection. Where am I? It's like when God, uh, uh, when after Adam sinned and God came looking for him, they used to have fellowship. They, they, were, they were boys. They, they, they hung together. Sin came and, and broke up that relationship. And God, he said, listen, Adam, where are you? Something's changed. Where are you? Where are we? Take that time to ask yourself, Lord, where am I? Where am I? And many of us might say, well, you know, years ago I was a lot more passionate about the Lord or I had a, a drive for God or I had a hunger for th God's word and I, I spent time in prayer and, 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 you know, such and such has happened and life has happened and, and, and here's where I am now. And just be honest with yourself. Just, and there's, not, there's no shame in that. I, I want to, there's no shame in this process of discipleship. Be honest with where you are. Because the only way God can bring change and transformation to our lives and really make us disciples is that we be honest, we become honest with where we are. And in small groups, let me tell you something, there is no shame in, in sharing in that small group. Because, listen, that group, has, God has, even though we haven't assigned the groups just yet, when those groups are assigned, let me tell you something, that is going to be God's will for you. That's, that's, that's God's little circle that he's orchestrated and put together so that you can pour into your neighbor and your neighbor can pour into you and together you can grow. Grow past certain levels. And all of us have, we, we, nobody's plateaued out. I'm the pastor. I, I'm growing just as much as you are. I got my book. Been through it 15 years ago, but thank God I'm going back through it again starting today. Because God wants to do something new. I'm not where I was 15 years ago. I remember my mindset going through 15 years ago. I didn't get everything. I was just trying to finish the book because <laughs> I was told to by my pastor at that time. But now I'm going through it with a different perspective. 
because I know that there's something God wants me to, to do. He wants me to grow. He wants me to, not just as a pastor, but as his child. So I'm taking off the pastor at this point, and I want to grow too and glean just as, just as much, much as all of us do. So uh, that circle is going to be a confidential spot. Get that confidential spot, meaning what you say, what you share in that group, it stays in that group. Okay? And don't be afraid to share amongst your group because that is your small group. Accountability, support, encouragement, enrichment, that's where it happens in that group. Okay? I don't want us to be churchy. I don't want us to say the, the right things just because we're in church. Let's get past that. It's time to be real. So in your small groups, take advantage of that safe place to find the help and the encouragement and the instruction that you need. That's what it's for. Okay. Is everybody clear? All right. So as we, as we get into that, you're going to find that uh, you're going to have an opportunity to evaluate. Now let's look with the time we have left at, um, at this concept or this idea of spending time with God, which should be our first priority. I want to highlight a couple things on page 12. There is a scripture in the margin, Mark chapter 2 and verse 18. We've already read, and we're going to get back to Luke 9, 23, uh, about denying ourselves, taking up our cross daily and following Jesus. But um, that's the goal. That's the core of what we're really trying to do. Um, but before I go into um, Mar Mark two eighteen, which is on the margin there on page 12, let me ask you a question, and I need some feedback on this. Uh, why is it, why is it so hard to just follow Jesus? Why, what, what in our, with our world, with the history of our world, not just present day, but talking about the, you know, just reality of humanity all throughout all times. Why is it such a struggle uh, just to follow Jesus? I mean, after he died on the cross, rose again, shed his blood, shouldn't it be easy just to follow Jesus? Shouldn't it just be just the ordinary thing, the normal thing to do? Why is it so difficult? Why do we have a, have a series that actually goes back and teaches how to follow Jesus? What, what's, why is it such a struggle? It's not natural. Why do you say that? Okay. And that pulls us not towards Christ or pushes us towards Christ, but it pulls us away from Christ. So there's an internal struggle going on. Um, let me ask you another question. What, if we're not following Christ, what, what, are, what are we doing? We're following something, someone. What, what are we doing? I mean, what, what, are the, what are the legitimate distractions that take the place of following Jesus? Temptation. What? Okay, let's be a little more specific. What are some things that actually pull people away? What would you say? Oh, she went deep. Text life. That it, it look that that's prime time. That's prime time. Because the Bible says, you know, it, it talks about being drawn away from, with our own lust. Okay, so uh, definitely that's a that's a big area today, and you'd be surprised. And it's not just young folk. Someone else. What are things that pull people away from really following Jesus? That mate, okay, all right, that's very cute because that's the closest person to you. You see what I'm saying? And so we've got to, and, and, and even the Bible talks about that, especially if you're, if you're saved and your mate's not saved, there's a pull there because one's going, this. It's like, it's like having your foot on the brake and the pedal. You see what I'm saying? You ain't going nowhere. You're going to do some damage in the process, though. But the Bible even talks about how to handle that. Okay, but that is a major uh, issue today as well. Someone else. Money. Oh, you guys are hitting all the hot topics. Money. What does the Bible say about money? The love of money is the root of all evil. All the things that we see today that are just seem to be successful and established, uh, but if they're governed by the love or the lust of money, covet covetousness, and that sort of thing. It's not going to last, okay? It's the root of all evil. Uh, email. Idolatry. Unpack that for me. What do you mean?
Okay, okay. Idolizing, put, putting someone, an, an idol in, in, in a spiritual sense, would be someone that, or something that takes the place of where God should be, uh, and that could be other people, um, status, you know, uh, success, possessions, um, whatever. It could be ourselves, okay? Anything that takes the place of God. Uh, is an idol. It's it's it's, it's, a, it's something that we begin to worship, okay. And 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 sometimes I think it's it's more subtle today than it has been in Scripture, where they actually built a temple and bowed down to a god. Well, that's apparent. It's subtle today. It's just we 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 allow things to slip in to that god spot, and we get okay with it. We get comfortable with it, and it just becomes a way of life. And before long, we're dealing with idolatry. Someone else. Friends, associates, those that are, are that you let into to your good, good, good. They can either push you uh, in the right direction or pull you in the wrong direction. Very good, very good. You're right. You're right. Yeah. 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 And we just go with the flow. We do. We do. Very, very good. Anyone else? Yes. Okay. Okay. So we, we, we there's an insecurity there and we want to be accepted by someone or some group. And we're willing to compromise to fit in, okay? And we find ourselves, again, being drawn the wrong way, consenting to do the wrong thing, uh, and it still doesn't yield the right results. So you're right. And that pulls us away from the Lord Jesus. That pulls us away from following Jesus Christ. Um, so many things. And the enemy is the master at causing these distractions, these little pop-ups. You know, I remember that, you know, uh, Chuck E. Cheese, when I was growing up, had that little game where the thing would pop up, had, you know, holes, and you had to hit it, find out where, where it was, and hit it, and before it popped back down, it'd pop up again, and pop back down. And, you know, you just spend all day trying to be faster than the board. Uh, the reality is that Satan causes the, these distractions, and, and some, some, so many times it's, it's, it's quicker than we are. You know, he's, he's more subtle than we are, and we find ourselves being really distracted by many things and not committed to the main thing. And Jesus is trying to get our attention again and again and again. So that's, that's really what it's, it's about. So I'm, I thank you for your feedback on that. There's a lot of things that people are following. Mark chapter 2 and verse 18 says this, and this is on the, uh, your margin there on page 12. It says, John's disciples, and you, 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 I'm just going to walk through this because this section actually gives us a, a a question, but I'll ask that in just a minute. John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting. Some people came and asked Jesus, how is, how is it that John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees are fasting, but yours are not? Now, I'm going to ask what the text asks. You fill it in uh, as you go through that uh, section this week. But how many disciples or categories of disciples do you see represented in that verse? Who are they? Yeah, John's, the Pharisees, and Jesus, okay? So, so what does that tell us? Everybody's not following Jesus. Everybody's not following Jesus. And even present day, everyone's not following Jesus. Maybe in a religious context or in church, but still, it doesn't mean that everybody's following Jesus, okay? Uh, there are different... Uh, groups, different uh, commitments, different priorities, uh, different uh, ideas. But not everybody has latched on to the truth that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And therefore, I'm going to give my life totally and completely to him. Uh, look at uh, Mark chapter 3 and verse 14 at the bottom of the page there. 
Someone read that verse for us. Now, there's something very key in that verse. He, Jesus, he appointed 12, designating them apostles, that they might be what? With him. With him. And that's the spending time with him. That's being disciplined in your personal devotions with him. Because what happens after you're, you and I are with him? What does the verse say? That they might, that he might send them out to preach and to have authority and to drive out demons. In other words, the success of their ministry was really resting on their time with him. Their impact in service was dependent upon their time with him. So, so we can't rush past the time, the time, the time. We've got to take the time. And you say, preacher, I don't have enough time. Well, you, 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 listen, you and I need to rearrange how we use our time. Because, listen, if, if an emergency were to take place in our lives, we would make that change. We would make that shift. We, we know how to do that in emergencies. We just don't keep saying the same old, singing the same old song. I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. Something big enough happens. We make the time. And what, what am I saying? This is big enough and should be big enough in each and every one of our lives where we make the time to spend time with God. Because out of that time comes the power and, and listen, the, the, the direction, the insight, the wisdom, the guidance to do whatever God has called us to do. It, stopped, it starts with that time with God. Take that time. Use that time. Don't uh, misuse that time. Okay, so as you move through, and I'm going to stop there because you're going to get into the rest of the uh, chapter, uh, week one. Um, day one would be Monday, so that's that's your assignment on Monday that we just began. But continue to go. Um, day two, Tuesday, under Christ's control. Um, and then uh, as you move to day three, connected to the vine. That's John 15. And then... Uh, Again, you're writing in your book and filling out your assignments, and the daily master communication guide is going to be on your on your uh, margins. Fill those in. Read those passages. Pray through those things. Think through those things, and write down your honest uh, reflections as you read those passages. Um, let me let me say this: refrain from one word or two word answers. Okay, use details. Be detailed. Okay, this is not a short short word answer. Uh, be detailed in your response and be thorough in your response. Uh, really how you feel, you know, what you think, what the Lord said to you. Um, share those things. Day four, learning obedience. And uh, as you move through those things, day five, challenges to obedience. Um, so we're going to learn how to make Jesus and following Jesus the main priority. And by next Sunday, we're going to come back together and work back through week one, share what you've discovered and uh, what each uh, what your group members have discovered as well and talk through it and then be prepared for week two. So as we as we do this and this will become a way of life, it'll become a discipline. It'll become a joy. And I pray that you find joy in it because it will enrich your life. Uh, the Bible says that it'll keep us in perfect peace. If our mind is stayed on him. And a lot of us are dealing with controversy and trouble and needless stuff simply because our minds are scattered. And our minds are not stayed on Jesus. The discipline that this, that this will provide, it will focus our minds on Jesus and what his word says to us. And the Bible is true. He'll give us peace as we do so. And I believe God to do that for you this week. All right. Any questions? Uh, so far. Again, on the first Sundays, we will have our general session. We'll walk through uh, a portion of the lesson, uh, and then we'll break up into our groups uh, for the re remainder of the month. Okay.